Hello everyone and welcome back to the Pottery Corner. I'm Sarah Amos, welcome to my studio down on the south coast of England near Chichester. Today we're doing another glaze kiln fire opening. Um, the students are back as of the beginning of September so the work is starting to ramp up and as you can see there are pieces waiting to get into the kiln um, for future firings. In this kiln is the commissioned bird bath that I've been working on and you'll have seen the um, un bisque fired piece um, on the last video and lots of you have asked to see it when it's finished. Well, it's in this kiln. So um, we'll have a look at that and see what we think. Um, I have just had ooh, the sneakiest of sneaky peeks, as you know. Um, this kiln was actually cold yesterday. It's down to 22 degrees centigrade. So um, that's, uh, that's less than ambient temperature here in the UK at the moment. We're in a bit of a heat wave. Um, so I'm going to turn off the kiln supply, flick the um, kiln switch and we'll open it up and see what we've got. Right, so in the top of this kiln is the bird bath top. Um, the base is here that we looked at last time in the last video. Um, and this has just been made in craft crank, decorated with a textured roller um, and glazed with um, Amico's blue rutile. Um, so that's the base section. So this is the top which I have made out of a rhubarb leaf. So I have rhubarb in my vegetable garden, so it was just a case of finding a leaf that would fit into the kiln, which I have to say is not easy because I always tend to make things too big and then I'm trying to make them smaller so they'll fit in the kiln. So there isn't very much room down the side of this piece. So I'll lift it out gently, gently. Um, so if I just lift it, I'm not completely happy with the colour of the birds. So the actual piece has been made, as I said, with a rhubarb leaf. So I've left the veining on the rhubarb leaf showing and filled that with Amico's Blue Rutile. So you get this lovely colour. And then I've used it again over the finer veins of the leaf and then wiped it off. So you're left almost with the stone colour which is the colour of the clay. Um, there is, I don't know if you can see him, but the birds are looking at this little tiny snail that's on here. Now the snail has been done in palladium and the birds were done in um, Amico's uh, Adventurine, which is the brown. And then on their heads, I used cosmic tea dust. I hope you can see the detail on there. There is just a little bit of difference between those two glazes. Now for me, the birds are a bit brown, but I do have a bit of a prejudice against um, brown glazes. So what I might do is pop some oatmeal over the top of that and refire it. Um, but before I do that, I'll show it to the lady um, who's bought it for her sister's birthday, 60th birthday, see what she thinks. So I'll ask the client first before I go and do that. So this, just to show you it finished, stands just on this little conical stand and will go out in the garden. So it's, it doesn't really need much of a stand. I'm just trying to wiggle it so that it's not moving. There we go. And you can't see that very well because it's a bit high, um, but that's how it will sit. And this on the outside, the blue on the outside is Amico's Blue Rutile, which looks slightly different when it's on Craft Crank, but it's lovely. It's a lovely dusty blue, not too much in your face um, and a really lovely color, base color. OK, so that's that. We will see what she says as to whether or not you'll see that coming out in another kiln firing. So, but if I do put something on and refire it, I will spray the birds with hairspray, just a little bit, not till it's sopping wet, let it dry and then put some Amico's oatmeal over the top, hoping to tone it down a little bit. It's a little bit brown for me. Right, so shelf out. Um, there isn't terribly much in this kiln, um, although the wonky pots, from, let's get rid of that, 
the wonky pots from the wonky pot tutorial if you haven't seen it have a look um uh, are in two of them are in the kiln so i'll just take the props out because we really don't like those okay right so wonky pots um, and the wonky pot template just to touch on that is in the etsy shop and it's selling well so thank you if you've purchased a wonky pot template um i am having uh, comments about people saying can i put it in pdf form hmm i'm sure i could if i was 30 years younger and knew how to do the technology but at the moment i'm just sending out templates um in the post so have a look at that I'll, I'll, there's a link in the um description below if you'd like to have a look okay so first of said wonky pots so this one if you remember had uh, mono printing techniques on it um so this has been mono printed uh, with using coloured slip and underglazes and again there's a whole mono printing playlist so do have a look at that um, and we put a little bit of the detail onto the legs from the mono printed clay um, so this is lovely and inside I've just picked the colour from the um, slip powders I was using uh, and used that colour inside so that colour inside is Amico's Chun Plum so it matches the inside of the pot matches this color that's that's pulled round the actual pot itself and this this piece here is a little piece of ellen underglaze transfer in blue so that's really rather lovely and then i've just spotted on some underglazes and i've used a textured bead just to put a little bit of um, texture actually on the pot and use the bead on the seam so that's a nice wonky lots of lovely personality and i hope those of you that have bought your templates are having fun uh, playing with it and putting your own personality on your on your pieces okay so this is the other of the um, textured wonky pots that we made so this has been made using the textured stamps so bisque textured stamps and again i make um textured stamps and i think there are a few st sets still in the etsy shop so if you would like to have a look have a look in the etsy shop um and i make them with all over texture from my unique stamps i like to use my own texture so that i get my own patterns on these now this has been glazed in our old friend rainforest so this is rainforest on the base rainforest on the legs rainforest inside and the glaze that's on the outside this speckled um, glaze is a mako jungle gems called fruity freckles Fr fruity freckles um, and it's lovely it's really nice but i think it goes really well with amico's rainforest because this is obviously a very expensive glaze in comparison to the normal glazes that I use. So I only really want to use it on the bit that shows. So the most important part of the pot, which is the outside. So I do use the Jungle Gems and the other Amoco special glazes in combination um, so that I'm only using the expensive glazes on smaller surface areas. Because absolutely no point in putting that on the base because nobody's going to see it. So I might as well use an Amoco glaze that I would normally use which is cheaper than the Jungle Gems but isn't that lovely I love that that colorway a bit of orange bit of green bit of blue really lovely so yes very happy with that and again you know the texture because it's my own stamps it, it means that there's nobody else that will have one that's like that so um yes another wonky another lovely wonky with personality ready for his plant okie doke let's see what's next now i had two students um, recently on a throwing course most of their work is is here and waiting to go in the kiln but i did manage to get two pieces in so shout out to nina and olympia and i must admit that i was really impressed with how they managed because i wasn't sure um, whether they'd actually be able to give it a go but gosh did they give it a go and Olympia particularly was very very good having done um, a course one a one day course earlier in the year so she was really very good so this Olympia 
is yours. Um, so this mug has been glazed using uh, Amico, uh, yes, Amico's June Bug on the outside, which is the green, okay? Which again, we've got this sort of lovely sort of textured surface, really rather nice. And then inside that is mulberry. It's an interesting choice of colours, but the mulberry inside and on the spiral handle, really rather sweet. And look at that for a first go. I mean, you know, come on, she can use that with pride. Well done, Olympia, it's really rather lovely. And then Nina, your mug. This is Amico's textured turquoise. Um, and again, okay, so I'll admit, it's a little bit um, out of shape on the inside from the throwing. Um, but she she's never done it before ever so well done nina this is really very lovely and again you know it's a usable mug it you know okay it's a bit small but you know she can use that and every time she uses it be proud that she made it so well done nina that's really very pretty lovely uh there isn't very much else in this kiln uh there is a flower ring of mine which I'll just lift out carefully so my flower rings I put onto the um, homemade stilts that we've talked about before and again there is another video on the channel about homemade stilts now this one I have glazed in palladium oh doesn't it just go absolutely everywhere and as you can see luckily for me it didn't actually drip off but I have got a little bit of a dremeling uh, issue on the back of here and one of my viewers actually suggested putting the flower rings onto bum feet and actually I did think that was a very good suggestion so if that's you thank you very much so I think the next batch that I make I will probably put on bum feet now I was selling these at the art trail and allowing people to choose the glaze colour that they wanted um, and this particular lady chose palladium and I thought oh brave brave but actually it's it's actually really nice however as we know with our old friend palladium we have a slight issue with pinholing here and here now i don't think it necessarily detracts from the piece um, because obviously it's going to have flowers in it but from uh, an aesthetic point of view you know look at the pinholes on it it's um yeah I don't know what the answer to that is. So if anybody watching has a particular tip for sorting out pinholes with palladium, do let me know. But I mean, it almost looks like chrome. It's a fabulous mirror finish. And I hope the camera is picking that up. I mean, it really does look like metal. Um, so it's a fabulous, fabulous glaze if you treat it in the right way. And as I say, it is a, it's an absolute monster for dripping so do be careful and if i show you the bottom of the kiln just quickly tip the camera forward for you have a little look that's how many cookies i've stood it on so i'm taking absolutely no chance that that palladium is going to go on my kiln shelf right and as you can see there's just one more piece in this kiln now this is the um, mug that we fired in the last kiln opening that I have refired using a kiln stilt. So one of these ceramic kiln stilts, which I've put into the bottom of the mug. Now, obviously you do end up with stilt post, stilt bottom bits in the bottom of your um, mug, which will just take a little flick with the Dremel. Um, and one actually one edge as you can see has come off of this stilt you can see that and that's actually in the bottom of the mug but it doesn't take more than a little flick and you're not going through the depth of the glaze back to the clay base so your piece is still fully glazed but it does mean that you do have to do a little bit of dremeling in there so if you remember last time um, the combination on this mug is Amico snow inside and down the first sort of couple of centimetres and then it's blue lagoon blue lagoon blue stone blue midnight so all the blues um, and when it when it first went through it literally dripped right the way off which I thought that it probably would 
Um, and I've knocked the cookies off the bottom. Again, somebody asked a question on that this week. Um, do I take the cookies off before I fire it upside down? Yes, I do. Um, in this particular case, you'll see that some of the cookie is still attached to the globs of glaze. Um, uh, so it has made a bit of a mess. I shan't be able to sell this mug unless I sell it as a second because of the mess on the bottom, which I will dremel off. But actually, it's a really lovely glaze combination. I hope you can see if I bring the piece close to you, this lovely um, act reaction with the glazes. And obviously where it's been fired upside down, it looks unusual because of course the glaze is running the wrong way. So when you turn it up, it, it's unusual that the glaze has come up this way. Isn't that lovely? And that was a tip that I got from um, John the Potter I'm sure all of you must watch John the Potter's channel. Um, so, you know, he 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 did a thing about uh, refiring mugs upside down. So, yes, I, I stole the idea. But, you know, John, that's it's a really cracking idea and it does save you from wasting a mug that you can then use. Um, and actually, I really like it when it comes out second time because the, the glazes have gone up the other way and and the glazes have reacted differently on the way down on the refire. So that's lovely. And the handle has been done using a spiral, um, using a ridged butter pat. And there is actually a video on um, making and attaching handles on the channel if you'd like to take a look at that. So that's all that's in the kiln. But I wanted to share a few things with you. Um, this, is my, this is my first coffee of the day mug. Now this mug was made by wonderful Monique who is based in Bonaire and if you watch my videos regularly you'll know that um, Bonaire is my favourite place in the world. It's one of the Dutch Caribbean islands um, which is just uh, above Venezuela um, in the Caribbean and she makes these absolutely incredible Scrofito mugs. So this is my first cup of coffee of the day mug. Um, and every time I use it, I think of lovely Monique and she also has a YouTube channel and I'll I'll pop a little link across. So do have a look at Monique's channel. I mean, how talented is she to Scrofito this piece? Beautiful. So I'm really pleased to have this in my, my in my collection, Monique. So cheers to you. First coffee of the day. Need to get the uh, caffeine level up. Mmm. Right, just a couple more things. Freddie Moretti, I love you, I really do. He's in Land of the Lakes in Florida. And he sent me a little note to say that his wonky pot template had arrived, hurrah! Um, and what he's working on there. And what he's got on there are three and a half inch square extrusions, which is this part on the picture. Hope you can see that. Um, and a napkin holder. And there's the Wonka Pop templates in the background. So lovely. I'm glad they arrived safely, Freddie. Hope you have fun making the Wonka Pops and do remember to send me a picture when you've done it. Um, and the other one that we had this week, which I thought was lovely, um, is from Fiona Tomlin. Now, Fiona's in Melbourne in Australia, which is literally the other side of the world from me. Um, and they are still in lockdown. Bless you, all my Australian um, viewers. I am feeling for you, those of you who are still in lockdown. However, there is always a bright side, isn't there? It does mean that we can do more clay projects. So it's not all bad, but I am thinking of you. Um, and she watched the Sculptural Poppy Head uh, tutorial, which again, have a look on the channel. Um, and she has made um, a lovely poppy head here and then has used the same technique of making the sphere that's in the poppy head tutorial to make a couple of pumpkins aren't they lovely and of course this time of year it's september now we're ramping up for halloween so it's a good idea to uh to redo the poppy head uh tutorial into pumpkins and that isn't difficult to do um and fiona said that she's also had a go at making wonky pots and she's got some that are being bisque fired at the moment. So Fiona, thank you for sending me a picture. Thank you for taking the time to um, pop something across to me. I really love it when you take the time to send me your work. 
um, from the tutorials that are on the channel so that I can see what you're making. It just makes my day. So thank you for doing it. It's really nice to see your work. So thanks for that. OK, so um, I haven't really got very much in the way of um, student of the week. Da, 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 da. Student of the week this week. But obviously my two 16 year olds. Cheers to you girls, Olympia and Nina. Well done. Thank you for coming to the course. I know that you enjoyed it. Um, and it was fun having you here and your enthusiasm was infectious. So um, well done you two, that's really good. So that is all you've got today. Do have a look at the other videos on the channel. There's quite a lot of um, how to's and glaze openings, um, various bits and pieces going on. So do have a look at those and I'll see you all on the next one. Bye for now, everybody.